My name is Reed Stefan, realest puppet in the game, and I'm a music producer, songwriter, and engineer. And today, I'm collaborating with Kara to record and mix EDM vocals in Ableton. I'm going to be sharing our process from start to finish using 99% stock Ableton plugins. Kara is in the vocal booth recording through our Slate ML1 microphone connected to our Apollo interface. I've got my gain set up at a perfect level for the song we're about to sing, plus a little UAD compression and reverb to sauce up the headphone mix. Here's an instrumental I produced and bounced as a high quality 32-bit WAV file with nothing on the master chain. Let's drop it into a blank Ableton session and set our project tempo to 150. Now let's make sure our settings are good for recording. Command comma opens your settings where you can choose your audio interface where you have your mic connected. And in here, you can turn down your latency settings from 1024 to 128. Or if you're using an Apollo and you have this third party console app to control your headphone mix, you could just leave it at 1024 and mute your audio channel like I'm gonna be showing you in this tutorial. So let's create a lead vocal channel. I'm gonna make my recording channel red and we're gonna rename it Kara. And this is a great shortcut to do first because everything we record is gonna have the name of what you type in here. And then we're gonna record our mic connected to input one. Make sure that our input monitoring is off because like I said, we're monitoring through our headphone mixing console and enable it for recording. And we're ready to record our very first vocal take. I like to create a keyboard shortcut using the lowercase letter R. Command K opens your keyboard shortcut menu and then press it again to save it. And let's record with the click on. See the sky is a limit, but how high really is it? Cause I'm already in heaven. Hey, hey. And that's a great first take. I could do better than that. If you feel like you could do better than that, like she said, we're gonna create take lanes that will allow us to combine the best parts of takes later. So let's right click on this and show take lanes. And as you could see, our first recording is already down here in a take lane, meaning we can delete it without actually deleting it. And we can keep recording the same spot over and over again and keep every recording. So let's try another take of the first verse. <clears throat> Say the sky is the limit, but how high really is it? Cause I'm already in heaven. And you could do as many takes as you think you need to nail the performance. But Kara, how many more would you like to do? I think we got it. Let's create a channel for these to actually play back on. I'm gonna drag this down here, and we can call this our lead vocals. I also like to hear our progress through a couple of plugins like tuning, compression, and reverb. Things that we would have in the mix anyways, but just there quickly and tentatively to give us a better idea of how we're sounding so far. So let's start out with some auto-tune. I'm gonna hit Command F to find a plugin, and I'm gonna type in my favorite version of auto-tune, the real-time UAD auto-tune. I use the mono version because these are mono recordings. The key of this song is E minor. So I'm gonna use the set minor button and choose E. And here we can just adjust our retune speed. And this can be heavy or light. We're gonna go somewhere in the middle. And that'll just help us hear the content of our takes and the tone and the delivery and the timing without worrying so much about the pitch. We can fix all that later, and like I said, comp together the best pieces. Let's add a couple more effects to this before we keep recording, just as a nice playback mix. I'm gonna pull this down for a little bit of threshold reduction, and I like to switch this to the classic look like this. I just find this to be a little more visually easy to understand. And we'll dive into attack and release and better compression settings later. I just want a little bit of squeeze to even everything out as we go. Let's also add one final effect just to help everything sound nice, and that's gonna be some reverb. Now, I like to use reverb as a parallel effect on an aux channel. 
and Ableton has the best shortcut ever for that, and it's called Plugin Groups. And you just hit Command G, click this button to create a parallel chain. So we can have our dry signal coming through one channel and our reverb signal coming through another channel. This gives us 100% wet here with independent volume of each. And that's a perfect vocal chain just to get our ideas sounding great as we record. So back to the lead vocals, let's go in to our pre-chorus. We can even mark where we want our pre-chorus to be here by right clicking. Verse one, pre one. And these are gonna come in handy later as things start to fill in in our session. But let's go through all of our takes and pick the best pieces. Ableton makes it really easy to listen through all of your recordings and picking your favorites. All you have to do is highlight and click enter and you'll find your comped vocal at the top. So let's drag these takes back into the playlist so we can listen to everything side by side. I'm going to click this speaker icon so that I can solo my first take. I'm just gonna focus on this first line here. Much better. I like the energy of take two, so I'm gonna highlight this guy and click enter. At least I like the ending, so I'm gonna click this up. Let me see if I can get a better beginning. That's a strong beginning, so let's take that. So once you're finished comping, you can close all of your take lanes and you have your finished lead vocal. I like to keep my red channel for recording, so I'm gonna cut and paste this down here onto my lead channel. We can assign this color to all the clips. I just wanna zoom in and do a little bit of crossfade work to help these just feel a little bit cleaner. There's some space in between the vocals that could be removed and even some breaths that can be reduced. I like to do this by separating them into their own piece double clicking and turning the volume down. And while we're in here, I also like to disable warp because we're not gonna be changing the tempo of these. So we really don't need that going at all. We'll have a slightly higher quality of audio with that off. So let's take everything and turn warp off. And let's just go through and do some little crossfades and breath reductions to help this just feel as smooth and clean as possible. Nothing sounds better than just going in here and manually cleaning up what you don't want to hear. And we've got a perfectly cleaned up vocal ready to stack with doubles, harmonies. Let's create some more channels. I'm going to duplicate this channel, delete all the layers, and let's just make it a slightly different color. And let's move our recording down here onto this channel. And our first doubles don't come into the pre-chorus, so I'm going to start it right here and press R. Taking off on top, blue and out of space. And we'll do that once more for the left ear. And let's shrink these tracks so that they're not quite as tall as the lead vocal. That'll just help it stand out in the pile more. I'm going to make a duplicate of this pair. And everything that we do is going to be recorded in pairs. Let's try yellow. Let's do orange instead of these weird browns. And then let's make this... We'll make this blue. I don't yeah, know. I was getting into this weird brown palette that I wasn't feeling. So we're just gonna, <laughs> fortunately Ableton has all the colors you could ever ask for. So let's- Label let's, those low, okay. those low octaves. So we're just gonna keep repeating this pattern of recording things that enhance the lead vocal, like low octaves, high octaves, harmony layers. And again, everything is in pairs. And when you're all finished, you have a big stack of vocals that looks like this. So there's all of our background vocals, stacks, doubles, harmonies, and everything to support the lead. 
the last layer that we're going to record are ad libs. And these are like the cherry on top of the icing on top of the cake. The final ideas that are just improvised, call and response, counter melodies, anything that just fills in the vocal and adds that extra little bit of personality into the acapella. So let's do that right here below the lead on a duplicate of the lead channel. Let's call these ad libs. And we'll let the first verse and pre be on their own. And we'll have some ad libs come in for the second half to switch it up. So we've gone through and picked our favorite ad libs. I'm just gonna keep this bypassed until later. I'm gonna turn these channels down a little bit, like ad libs really should be in the background. And I'm also gonna give them a little bit of panning because we duplicated the lead. These need maybe just a little bit off the center, like 20% left and right. So that's everything from lead vocals, ad libs, doubles, low octaves, high octaves, harmonies, and background vocals. Now, these recordings are ready to be mixed. I'm just gonna go and consolidate this into one clip by using the keyboard shortcut Command J. That just makes this a little bit more manageable, consolidates all those little pieces into one large new piece, which will be a little easier to work with as we go forward and mix this track. We can also delete our recording channel because we no longer need that or any of the playlist contents. And it's time to go in and really put together this lead vocal chain and everything else below it. So far, we've been listening through tuning, compression, and a reverb, but I just wanna add a couple more things that are gonna help this sound good. I'd like to add some EQ just to do some cleanup in the low end to make sure that no unnecessary bass or stuff under 100 hertz is getting into this vocal recording. Maybe with male voices, you would go down to 80 or 70, but for female voices, I like around 100 or 90. See the sky is the limit, but how high really is it? I'm already in heaven. 90 feels perfect for this voice because she's not really singing too many high notes. Give it all, don't stop. It's a green light. Taking off on top, we're in outer space. No gravity in our way. And I'm just going to mute all my doubles for now and we could close these groups. I'm really just focused on my lead vocal. And that's another thing I love having these Ableton mix groups for. Now we're not going to do anything surgical with this EQ, but we are going to be automating the frequency of this low cut. So I'm going to right click and show automation. And I love using this as an effect going into the drop, for example, to make the vocal feel a little bit thinner. and then back down to 90 where it was originally. And this just helps the vocal progress and do the same thing that the buildup is doing, just get thin and no bass right before the big bass drop. And I'm using the option key to curve this automation to do more of a scoop instead of a slope. And then it goes right back down to where it belongs. And I'm also gonna do the same thing, but using the reverb volume going up right into the drop. That's just gonna help push that reverb tail up and we can even do the same thing with the decay tail. Give it a nice long reverb right in this spot where it needs it the most. And to help it cut off when the snare hits, I'm gonna do some automation on this. So let's have it be on. And then right here, I want it to cut off when that snare hits. Without adding too many more plugins to the chain, we've added a lot of variation and cool effects just by automating very simple things. And let's get back to our next plugin. I really like compressing the vocal in a few different ways beyond just simple serial compression. I might actually pull this down 50-50 because I'm gonna be splitting the compression work between three different types of compression. Next is gonna be multiband compression. And I love this OTT preset, but it's really extreme. So I like to push it up from zero instead of down from 100. 
So let's go listen to it on loop. See the sky is the limit, but how high really is it? Cause I'm already in heaven. So as you can see, you could go from really pinched and compressed sounding back to dynamic and natural. So we're gonna be using this at a very low amount. Now, what I love about this compressor is the ability to combine expansion, which are these three blue bars. You can add expansion in the mids and expansion in the highs. And this is like the opposite of compression. This is like bringing up the quiet stuff and these orange bars on the right are compression. These are controlling the level of the loud stuff. And these little dashed lines in here act as a ratio. For example, these are set at a very high ratio and this is a low ratio. So we have almost limiting going here on the top and some light expansion going here on the bottom. So that's a little breakdown of what you're looking at when you have OTT open. And then of course you have your input and output levels and an attack faster or attack slower. But I like leaving the time at the default value. See the sky is the limit. And using this to really dial in the tone of my voice. I'm already in heaven. Let's pull the level output hey, down. Hey, Bring the amount up. Got lost for a minute. But your touch got me feeling alive. Feeling like paradise, paradise. And I feel like the mids were getting a little out of control, so I used the compression and pulled it back so it wasn't getting so overpowered, but we're expanding the highs and lows quite a bit. I can even bring down some compression here in the lows too. See the sky is the limit, but how high really is it? And I'll just do like 15%. I'm already in heaven. And hey, we'll turn OTT hey, off. Got lost for a minute, but your touch got me feeling. And back on. Really low amounts with OTT are the trick when using it on vocals. I might even just do 10% instead of 15. We're just trying to do a tiny, tiny little amount. But if you wanted a squeeze or compression knob, that would definitely be it. Now, the one thing that I am going to be using aggressively is some parallel compression. And we could set that up here inside our audio effect rack. And I'm going to use the glue compressor and drop it in. Click Command R to rename this glue. And we'll assign a color to our glue slow attack, fast release, high ratio, pull the threshold down and up with the makeup a little bit. We're gonna pull the output gain down on this channel to match like what the reverb is. See the sky is the and we're gonna be slamming this compressor. So what this is doing is parallel compression. We have our dry vocal coming in at full volume and at a very quiet volume, we have this over compressed version of the vocal. I ended up slamming this all the way. We're looking for an extreme compression effect, but at a very low volume where you almost don't hear it. It just fills in a little bit when you turn it on and off. See the sky is the limit, but how high really is it? Cause I'm already Now with the attack and release, you could choose if you want to bring more attention to the beginning of the words, do a slow attack. If you want to bring more attention to the tails of the words, do a fast release. And I'm doing a little combination of both here. Alive, feeling like paradise, paradise. Let's turn our whole chain off. Give it all, don't stop. It's a green light. Taking off on top, blowing out of space. No gravity. already sounding much, much better. Next thing I wanna add is some saturation. A lot of people are recording a mic directly into an interface like we are, and it's missing all that good harmonic grit and goodness that you get from analog gear, and you could emulate that very easily with some saturation. And I like to drop that here before the compression and the OTT after the EQ, and just boost it a little bit and then reduce the output gain the same amount. Hey, hey, just show me the meaning. 
And again, this is something that you can blend in. You don't have to leave it at 100%. A lot of these effects I like putting at 50-50 and just using a little bit of. Finally, I wanna add some delays to these vocals to really give them those rhythmic fillers in between the lyrics. There's some nice spaces where the beat's just rocking, and it would be great to have the vocal echoing out some of those lyrics. Let's switch these from dotted to regular notes. And I'm gonna switch these to a very slow half note delay to start out. And we're probably gonna be creating a couple delays. So I'm gonna start by naming this half. And we could color these. I like picking a color that matches the plugin for the rack. Just helps me remember what's what. Pull this down again. Let's sauce these delays up with some reverb. And now you could hear kind of competing with the dry vocal a little bit too much. And a great built-in feature in this plugin is ducking that allows you to reduce the volume of the echoes while the singing is going. Like mix themselves. And we're not gonna leave this on the whole time. When the lyrics pick up pace right here where I paused it, I'm gonna keep it off. Out of space, no gravity in our way. Hey, hey, hey. Do it once, do it and twice, then back off. Three times. Keep it up, we can love to infinity. Forever and ever. And those are some super saucy delays but they're a little slow feeling and that's not appropriate for the entire song, just those spots that we automated them on and off. Let's try duplicating this, deleting the automation, and let's change this to say one quarter note and change this to say a quarter note. And let's switch up the vibe on this. We'll do a little bit of ping pong, but not completely ping pong, just like a little bit. I love that option. A lot of plugins just force you to do 100%, but Echo gives you an option. Let's also turn the ducking down just a little bit. And I'm also gonna sauce these delays up with some saturation by turning up the input and clicking this drive button. And then we can turn the output down about that same amount so it doesn't get too much louder. And let's use these faster paced parts as where we want our quarter notes. So let's hit the letter A, turn it on. Give it all, don't stop, it's a green light. Taking off on top, we're in outer space. No gravity. So these lead vocals are now sounding huge. We're gonna use this chain as the foundation to mix a lot of our other channels, starting with our doubles. I'm actually gonna, even though our ad libs are here, I'm actually gonna save these for last. So let's drag these down and let's go down to our doubles. I'm gonna use this chain to process all of our doubles. I'm just gonna make sure that I don't take the auto tune with it. We're just taking all of the stock Ableton plugins. Command C, I click here. I'm gonna delete this chain because we just sauced it up big time and paste. So now we have our lead vocal chain processing all of these doubles. I just wanna make a few adjustments to it and delete some of this automation that we don't need. A lot of it's actually gonna be perfect because our doubles line up perfectly with our lead. And let's get rid of some of the bass in these doubles. And I wanna get rid of some of the treble too, but I don't wanna completely get rid of it like a filter. I just wanna duck it a little bit. Stay. So that's a great chain for our doubles. Let's once again copy this down as a new chain onto our background vocals. And we're gonna overwrite our background vocals chain with this. And we're gonna start out with some high filtering to completely take away all the high frequencies in these. Because remember, our background vocals are our counter melodies, something that's supposed to sound like it's in the background, and filtering is just the easiest way to achieve that effect, but we're also gonna do a few more things in addition to that. I'll show you what vocals I'm talking about. 
in the second verse. In the ceiling, don't leave me broken hearted. These right here. Show me the meaning of this life that I'm dreaming. It's true. Give me all and you can hear how that filter just tucks them away so nice. Give it all, don't stop. I'm going to delete all these automations that we've done that got copied down just so we have full control. Let's just do a whole bunch of half note because these are all so slow. Up in the feeling, higher than the ceiling. A bunch of reverb. Don't leave me broken hearted. Some longer reverb too. The longest reverb in this whole mix. Hey, just show me the meaning of this life that I'm dreaming. It's true. Give me all of you, all of you. Let's pull the volume down a little bit more. Give it all, don't stop. And let's hear it with the music. Take some of these and pan them about halfway. So those are a great collection of effects to send these into the background. Finally, the last group of vocals that we need to mix are the ad-libs. I have them split between two different chains and panned a little bit left and a little bit right. This creates an auto panning effect, but with a little bit less constant movement. It stays to the right, and then it stays to the left, left, right, left, right, and you get it throughout the whole song. So let's hit Command-G as we always did in the beginning, and let's paste our chain from our background vocals, because this is actually really similar to what we're gonna be doing to the ad-libs. I might just do even more filtering, because I think these are gonna be the most tucked away vocals in the whole mix, and also the most processed vocals in the whole mix too. So I'm gonna hit these with a flanger. Drop it right here before our effect rack, 50%, just to give it some of that extra sauce. Don't leave me broken hearted. Hey, hey, hey. Just show me the meaning of this life that I'm dreaming. It's true, give me all of you, all of you, yeah. Give it all, don't stop, it's a green light. Taking off on top, we're in outer space. No gravity in our way. Hey, 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 do it once, do it twice. That phaser is saucing. Keep it up, we can love to infinity. Forever and ever we'll stay. Give me all of you. And during this drop, I want to add a little pitch effect on here. And there's a brand new shifter plugin in Ableton that does that really well. I'm going to throw that here in the mix as its own chain. And we're going to keep the dry wet at 100%. And let's just shift this down 12 semitones. And we're also going to have this just come on right at the very end too. Just giving those that extra sauce. And we can even distort this some more with some overdrive. Hey. And that's just that final sauce that are gonna make these feel like part of the production in the drop. lips nice and quiet until the end. And since these are super processed, I'm gonna hit the OTT extra hard too, just so they cut through, especially at the end.
So these ad-libs are sauced up and ready to go. Let's wrap up this entire vocal mix with a master chain. We still have our master pulled down a little bit from when we were recording. Sometimes that helps you just match the level of your microphone better while you're tracking a vocal, but it's always important to remember to turn it back up when you go to actually master it. The first plugin I'm going to use in this master chain is some EQ. I really like the channel EQ because I feel like it adds more harmonic color rather than like sterile frequency boosting. And we're going to do just a tiny mid-range boost on this whole master. Let's close all of these vocals and let's click down here. See the sky is the limit. Now let's boost around but how high really is it? 3-4k I'm already in heaven But just a little bit Hey, hey Got lost for a minute Just like 1db But your touch got me feeling Alive Feeling like paradise, paradise Right around 4k sounds perfect this is gonna add a little bit of the mid-range that's gonna get lost through all the compression and stuff that we're gonna add in this master chain. Next, I'm gonna follow this up with some saturation. Just like we've been using to make our vocals a little bit louder to cut through, I'm gonna do this to the whole entire mix, and we're gonna blend this at 50% just like we've been doing. Let's listen to it during the drop. So we really got the mid-range to wake up and the overall loudness to just be punchier without actually making it louder on the meter using saturation. Speaking of dynamics and loudness, the next plugin I'm going to drop on this is going to be the compression. But not just the regular compressor, some glue compression. Because this emulates the very famous SSL Master Bus compressor that I love to use with a slow attack, fast release, just like before, high ratio, low on the dry wet. Mix it in. That's full blast. You can even hit the makeup a little bit. But we're not going to leave it at full blast. We're going just a little bit. Next, I want to use some multi band dynamics to control just the mid range a little bit. I'm going to do that by just applying some compression, no expansion. So just pull this down a little bit, just a very low ratio compression. I'm going to turn these up. Just a little bit more control in the mids, not so much in the highs and lows. I always like to turn it 100% to see what I'm really doing and then back down closer to zero just to blend it in a touch. So we've used multiband compression to control the mids with a little bit more compression, not so much on the highs and lows, and again, very small percentage on the amount. And then the glue compressor doing its thing with the parallel compression. You also have the option of using it as a clip or two, which you could just leave this as the last plugin in your chain and it'll keep the volume completely under control. I love combining clipping with limiting. So that means after this, we're gonna drop the Ableton limiter and just do that final little gain push. We're not really trying to push this attenuation meter at all. I don't wanna to see too much ceiling coming down. I just want it to be a little bit louder. And last but not least, the little bonus, I'm gonna do some vocals during the drop. Back when we were recording, we did some little samples. Kara did some. Give me all of you, give me all of you. Give me, give me, give me all of you. Give me all of you. Give me, give me. So we're gonna do 
do some kind of vocal sound design EDM stuff during this drop as the icing on the cake. This isn't really part of the acapella. This is intended to feel like it's more part of the beat. I want to drop down the pitch of these to record. Give me all of you. Give me all of you. By going into warp, we're going to leave these warped because we are actually trying to pitch these down and warp these. Now let's go. And that's just a special little vocal production moment that we made very quickly and easily just by squashing, distorting, compressing, adding some reverb so it sounds nice and big. So now that we have our master chain, vocal chain, some special samples, ad libs, doubles, background vocals, let's take a listen to how far we've come that we mixed and mastered with stock Ableton plugins. So there you have it, recording, mixing, and mastering EDM vocals using almost entirely stock Ableton plugins. If you want to get all my personal chains for mixing or mastering in Ableton, check out my links below to wholeloops.com, and I'll catch you guys next time in another tutorial. Peace out.